Welcome and thank you for coming. My name is Carolyn Vaughn and I've represented North Beach first as a city council member and now as county commissioner. For many decades, North Beach has been overlooked and underserved. Fast forward to April 24, 2018. Mayor Joe McComb and the City Council appointed a task force. The purpose of the task force was to address the stormwater drainage and flooding problems on North Beach and come up with a solution. We have literally started from the ground up, looking at the roadway flooding and what causes it, and creating a beautiful and functional solution. With these proposed improvements, North Beach will be a vibrant, exciting place to visit or to live. The quality of life for the residents and the visitors will improve greatly. Sit down, relax, keep an open mind, and take a look at what North Beach can be. More than a few failed attempts were made to settle the land along the Noasis Bay. Through lack of supplies, conflict with natives, or outbreak of revolution in Texas, more than three groups of settlers, primarily the French, Spanish, and Germans, could not make a stable home on the bay. After being raided by Mexican bandits in 1875 and seeing the railroad pass the settlement by in the early 1900s, the settlement declined and was later included into the city limits of Corpus Christi. After a wooden bridge was constructed over Hall's Bayou, now the Corpus Christi shipping channel, the Coastal Bend's most prominent families began investing in hotels and entertainment in the area including the fabulous Miramar Hotel, which burned down just four months after its opening. Those early families laid a foundation of what would come to be known as North Beach. In October 1909, President William Howard Taft toured the Coastal Bend, waving to crowds in downtown Corpus Christi, visiting the ranch of his half-brother, and playing the inaugural round of golf at North Beach's brand new Corpus Christi Golf and Country Club. The Great Hurricane of 1919 destroyed the beach. The only surviving structure was the concrete and brick Corpus Beach Hotel, which became a shelter for hundreds of residents whose homes were lost in the storm. Through great determination and the patronage of wealthy families, by 1926, the beach had come back and the North Beach Pleasure Park was dubbed the Playground of the South. Corpus Christi's annual Splash Day celebration, the precursor to Buck Days, took place on the beach, attracting tens of thousands of visitors from throughout Texas. For military men in World War II and airmen training at Naval Air Station Corpus Christi, North Beach was the place to be. The scene was even depicted in the 1981 film Raggedy Man, starring Oscar-winning actress Sissy Spacek. Hall's Bayou Bridge was replaced by the Harbor Bridge in 1959. The construction resulted in the loss of a significant portion of land on North Beach. And over the 1960s and 70s, much of the area fell into blight. The carnival and waterfront facilities went away, and the exciting memories of North Beach faded with them. The effort to bring North Beach back once again was made a city priority. And in 1990, the Texas State Aquarium opened its doors, followed by the USS Lexington Museum in 1992. But almost three decades later, and despite seeing more than 800,000 visitors per year, North Beach has not experienced growth or improvement beyond the opening of what have become the Coastal Bend's two most popular attractions. 
New hotels have not been built, shops have not sprung up, and more restaurants have closed and opened, and the blight that still remains and continues to grow is a visible reminder of unmet potential in what was once the center of recreation in South Texas. For those almost one million people who visit the aquarium in the Lexington every year, their only experience of Corpus Christi in the few hours that they're here is that of the great institution surrounded by a place they wouldn't want to live or work. If North Beach acts as a poor gateway to the region, they won't get to see the beauty of Ocean Drive, the history of Water Street, or the beaches on Padre. It's easy when you live somewhere to not see it through the eyes of a visitor. Even though we might love a city and know where its true beauty lies, we may not know what really needs to change to keep it growing and thriving. Every day, the CEO of the next major office tenant, the owner of the next hot restaurant, or someone who may be looking for a change of location, walks through the doors of the Texas State Aquarium or onto the Lexington. But what do they have to drive through to get there? A great city needs a gateway that leads people to explore the hidden jewels in the path less traveled. After watching this little piece of North Beach history, we can't capture all the unbelievable great memories of the last century that North Beach had. But what we can do is create new ones. So let me take you through a journey of the problems that North Beach has and the solutions to those problems. As we started our analysis on North Beach, the first thing was the drainage problem. All it took was a drive down Timon's Boulevard right after a thunderstorm to know that drainage was the biggest problem on North Beach. Next was urban blight. As soon as you got off the off-ramp, you saw houses that were vacated, buildings that were vacated. Third was the consistent erosion of the beach where the city hauled in sand every two years. Fourth is the environmental issues with North Beach. After conversations with the Heart Institute, Bays and Estuaries, and many others, how can we help the environment on North Beach that has long been forgotten? First, we'll talk about the drainage. The problem with North Beach is its elevation above sea level. North Beach is anywhere from zero to two, three, four feet above sea level and the flooding is affecting business owners. What hurts my business is I have beach houses right on the beach, right by the park down there, and uh, you can't access my property when it rains. The, uh, the beach area has uh, always had a problem with drainage and access, uh, especially closer to the north end, um, it, forcing people to have to drive through salt water, basically, to get to their destinations. We're looking at the North Beach area that's right here with the Ship Channel and Oasis Bay. The dark blue in this area is very low elevation, between zero and three feet. This is one of the areas that has issues with standing water and drainage having the ability to get out when it needs to. Part of that issue is there's an existing drainage system that is in North Beach. However, these are long runs, a very flat line that have to go out to the far ends of the peninsula because it's difficult to run a drainage outlet to Corpus Christi Bay where there's surf and other issues that happen. These lines are below sea level. Because they're below sea level, they get congested with barnacles 
and sediment that make them, that severely restrict their ability to flow and pass water that they need to. The solution is create a canal down the middle of North Beach. Everything out there in those properties is low lying. Drainage is always an issue. Uh, grading, you know, everybody tries to grade as much as they can to the right of way. A great solution to this is to bring a canal in through here and run it the majority of the length of the peninsula. This canal would be over 60 feet wide and have well more than the capacity needed to drain the peninsula. Establishing a central location for a drainage system out there and channeling it out to the ocean directly would potentially solve future problems in other developments and the ones we have right now. So the infrastructure on North Beach, like many other communities all across the United States, is already aging. So this particular infrastructure would, would get a, a rehab and you would be able to do the reconstruction, relocation, and refreshing that system so you'd buy yourself another 100 years or whatever the design life is for those systems. So we would, in, in essence, get an upgrade to the existing infrastructure affected by this canal. Creating this grand waterway down the middle of Timons Boulevard and Surfside, which was once an old railroad track. It was the right-of-way, which is now owned by the city. By digging out that canal, 10 feet deep, a minimum of 62 feet wide, all the material that comes out of that will raise the elevation on parts of North Beach, on land that's currently vacant, which will help the drainage even more, bringing property higher elevation. So if we put a canal here and some place for pedestrians to walk along beside it um, and if it could drain the water into there. Drainage is our number one problem on North Beach. The only development we've had have been some a small restaurant and some small homes uh, and rental homes. Being that it is downtown beachfront property, I have tried to encourage developers and investors to the area uh, but those two issues always come up. By building this canal, you have the unique opportunity to create a river walk like San Antonio or the boardwalk, downtown Disney, in Disneyland. You can create something that special, maybe even more special, because you've just created a waterway and the ability for people to congregate with amphitheaters and everything else. The North Beach project with the canals are absolutely marvelous. It is an incentive for people to come and dine and bring their boats. And they would come as far away as Rockport and Port Aransas. This is what Corpus Christi needs, is something that attracts boaters and condominiums and hotels and people like that. Well, if you build a canal and the restaurants around it, It'll create an experience for the guests who come here. And that experience they'll take back home and tell all their friends, and that'll expand the number of people coming here. Most young people don't stay in Corpus Christi. They either go off for bigger cities where something is happening uh, due to things that never happen in Corpus Christi. This is something that is happening now. Um, it's very exciting, it's very achievable, and we're at the point where we're pushing this and, and, and going to make this happen. This will be very exciting, especially for, for you know, people of my age and, and people that want to stay here looking for jobs, looking for opportunity, looking for something to do in Corpus Christi. I mean, the physical setting of the area is just, is, is bar none. It's gorgeous. You know, obviously it's our, on our beautiful bayfront and, you know, with views of the downtown, uh, you know, there's, there's no better place to, 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 to continue to focus energy and effort to get people to gather in places that truly makes a destination. The question I continually hear, if we build this canal, what about parking for people wanting to go to the beach? Actually, we create hundreds and hundreds of parking spaces that we don't have right now. Also, the canal can moor over 250 boats along its canal edge for people that want to come for a day just to eat, or go to the aquarium or the Lexington or go to the future amusement park. As the North Beach Task Force started this, there was a lot of naysayers. Very interesting. In three years, a billion dollar engineering architecture 
wonder of Texas will be completed. If our timing could be perfect, we could open up the Grand Canal down the middle of North Beach. Right now, 800,000 people get off the freeway and they see blight before they get to the aquarium or the Lexington. Number one, right here on North Beach. And to get here, you have to drive past buildings that are sh boarded up, shut down, fenced off, you know, streets that are crumbling. This over here, this is a derelict building that has been allowed to stand empty and gutted for four years. Over the years, North Beach has been considered a forgotten area. A lot of bad things happen on North Beach just because it's dilapidated and there's only a few nice places on North Beach. That's our only representation of Corpus Christi for those people that don't venture out to see Water Street, Downtown, Ocean Drive, or Padre Island. From the first day I stepped foot on North Beach, five years ago, I saw the potential of North Beach. But I also said the city needs to step fo forward and fix the drainage problem on North Beach. If, when the city steps forward and starts fixing the global problems on North Beach, then there becomes confidence in the market. It's interesting, we started a project on the north end of North Beach, a small little fishing village that has a 140 foot lighthouse with a little chapel. And we have just started the walls and I can already see the confidence in that little area of something positive happening to North Beach. Now the city has a responsibility to build this canal to take care of drainage in and of itself. That confidence will have developers come in and build several projects. I've had a long history of development around the world, but Pirates Beach and Cove in Galveston illustrates very well what North Beach is. Values on the ocean or on the Gulf of Mexico bring high values. Values on the canals bring high value. Properties in between bring significant lower values. North Beach is the same way. Properties on the beach bring higher value. If we can create a canal that's 100 yards away from the beach, it will create values farther into North Beach, closer to the highway, which increases the tax base for North Beach. One of the things our committee is strongly suggesting is a TERS, a tax increment reinvestment zone. Uh, North Beach needs confidence and a TERS or TIF uh, is going to be put in place uh, on North Beach to help with the maintenance and uh, increase density for your structured parking. Now I know today you're saying parking's not a problem, but if we create an amusement area or we create higher densities, parking will be the biggest issue. So we're thinking forward on those issues right away because on North Beach, we are chasing density. Uh, when I say maintenance, I'm talking about beach maintenance uh, and accessibility, uh, landscaping maintenance. We want North Beach to be maintained to the highest quality. I'm gonna say to Disney's quality. So when you get off the freeway and you come down that boulevard, you're gonna think you're in Disney. Well landscaped, well irrigated, because that is our showpiece. That's our showpiece for all of Corpus Christi for those 800,000 people that are going to show up. A TIF uh, basically starts in year one and gives the base ad valorem value to all the taxing entities so that remains consistent throughout the TERS. And as property values increase, you have what you call the captured assessment above. So there's no new taxes with the TERS or a TIF. There's no increased taxes on homeowners or property owners, but the values increase over time and those values return funds into the TIF, which takes care of the maintenance on the land throughout North Beach. We always talk about increased values or tax base. So let's go through that. As North Beach grows, the tax base should increase. 
the tax base today is around $200 million. Half of that tax base isn't even taxable because it's the aquarium or the Lexington or properties owned by the city. By creating a larger tax base, we'll have more money in the TERS to maintain the property on North Beach and also to help create parking structure for the density that will come. We estimate North Beach will have a value in the next 20 years of over a billion dollars and probably 5,000 residents. As people start coming there, you will see that there will be a grocery store and then the need for the fire station and then the police substation. All these things will come as the population grows on North Beach. But it all starts with a drainage project or a canal. One day I was sitting in Fajitaville having lunch with my partner, Lynn Frazier, who owns Fajitaville. And as we were looking out the window, he was telling me about the history of North Beach and the erosion problem on North Beach. That every two years they have to come in and bring new sand, in fact, river sand, which is very rough on your feet. And because of the wave action hitting the beach, whether it's by boats or just wind, and the current, it takes the sand, picks it up, and pushes it down. So the beach on North Beach is eroding every day. So Lynn Frazier and I sat in Fajitaville and drew on a napkin about creating breakwaters for North Beach, which then turned into being islands on North Beach. North Beach was blessed by somebody putting $250,000 in the 2018 bond program to study the islands and the wave effect these islands would have on North Beach, which would protect the existing homeowners today. That study is studying wave action, a hurricane event, and will study how the habitat will thrive in this area. So historically, that beach um, has had um, ongoing nourishment projects um, just because it does lose sand and there's really not a great sand source, uh, to a natural sand source to replenish that. So a lot of the material is lost and so really the best option rather than continuing to replenish the beach is protect the beach from erosion. These islands have a number of benefits. Number one, as a breakwater. We can break down the waves before they hit North Beach, which would be a huge benefit to the people now living on North Beach and people building in the future on North Beach. The breakwater protects the island in a, in a sense. So the breakwaters um, reduce the velocity of the wave action that's coming in. So the more breakwaters that you have, the, the, you know, the more drastic the reduction is going to be in the velocity coming in to the, the island proper North Beach. It even has the possibility of bringing down the height restriction on buildings being built on North Beach and possibly will even help insurance rates on the future. There are three basic coastal zones and one new zone in the new NFIP maps. The flood zone X is considered to be a low risk of flooding. The E zones or coastal high hazard areas are zones where high velocity wave action accompanies the storm surge and can cause severe damage to buildings. AE zones are areas affected by storm surge, but where wave action is diminished or absent. The islands as depicted in this illustration could potentially diminish the velocity zone for North Beach or lower the base foot elevations in North Beach. That is being studied today by Mott McDonald. The second benefit is environmental. On eight of the islands, we decided that we are not going to allow people, that they are a pure bird or nature sanctuary. Uh, one of the limiting factors we have here in the coastal bend area, Corpus Christi Bay, is really a lack of good nesting sites for, for a variety of birds that like these little islands in the bay. The islands are isolated from uh, predators, from human disturbance, 
that provide a nice safe environment for for the wildlife to utilize. The thing is, is if you know the currents, you know where your islands are going to be, you can pick and you can ID sites very well for for what we would do with it in terms of oysters, locating oyster beds. And I mean, it's, it's a no brainer, uh, pretty easy thing to do. Uh, we've lost a lot of islands to erosion and subsidence. So the idea here that that additional islands can be created and serve multiple purposes, both as habitat, uh, which is a priority for us at the Coastal Mid Basin Estuary Program, but also then provide that kind of wave break energy that, that protects public infrastructure. We like that a lot. The, the issue in that area always has been the, um, the environment can't get on its feet around North Beach because of all the outside influences that have occurred in the area. And it really hasn't been development. It's just been a, like a perfect storm in the area. On the other islands, people can swim out there, park their boat there, enjoy those islands. This could be a great attraction for ecotourism. In fact, talking to the aquarium, they're excited about it. You could take a boat from the boardwalk and go out to these islands in a family-friendly vessel and tour and show how industry and nature can work together. There are two parts to this North Beach project. One, the Bird Islands, and the other is the Grand Canal. The cost of the Grand Waterway is around $40 million, which should bring development of over a billion dollars over the next 20 years on North Beach. The cost of the Bird Islands are being studied right now. Those costs will be mainly funded by the federal government, grants, and other things like that. Being an outsider and being on this committee, this city has a unique opportunity right now to marry this project with the finishing of the bridge to give a new front door to North Beach create a new face for Corpus Christi and the 800,000 visitors a year that come. We have just shown you the culmination of our efforts really for the last five years, but more specifically six months. You've seen experts from engineers to architects to planners to environmentalists to people that study the ocean, wave action, you've seen all this. Now, with all that effort put together, we're going to take you for a ride on North Beach. We're going to show you what North Beach could be in 2023. Corpus Christi is only a short time away from being home to one of the engineering wonders of the world. Standing taller than a 50-story building and spanning more than five football fields at a cost of more than $1 billion, the new Harbor Bridge be the tallest structure in South Texas. Slated for completion in less than three years, the bridge will bring a new architectural fixture to the iconic Corpus skyline. Travelers crossing that bridge going north will have the best view of a new North Beach. Off to the right-hand side of the bridge is a part of town that's seen a lot of history. In recent memory, North Beach has struggled to grow and thrive. Over the next few minutes, we'd like to take you on a tour of the future of North Beach, the happiest place in Texas. Please hold on to your hats. It's easy to be jealous of the pedestrians and bikers on the side of the bridge. The two long-standing fixtures of North Beach, the world-renowned Texas State Aquarium and the USS Lexington Museum have a number of new neighbors. In the distance and on your way to Portland, stands the historic 140-foot-tall Fraser Lighthouse, which still acts as a guide for ships coming from ports of call in every time zone to one of the most significant ports in the Western Hemisphere, the Port of Corpus Christi. If you take the off-ramp to North Beach, and I don't know why you wouldn't, it would probably be clear that you've entered the kind of small beach town you might remember from a summer vacation back when you were young. Once you've slowed down from the highway to a speed where you can roll the windows back down and breathe the sea air, the sign in the distance welcomes you to a new and special adventure. A place you can call home for the next few days and the spot you'll come back to after you take in a baseball game 
enjoy the water park, or have a romantic dinner on Water Street in historic downtown. Clear the archway and enter an immersive world of the Meyer Nature Preserve. It's home to thriving saltwater vegetation and a flourishing population of native wildlife. At the end of the preserve, to our left, a celebration of the men and women who have served from Naval Air Station Corpus Christi. At the roundabout ahead, a 40-foot tall remembrance of celebrated animal researcher Tony Amos, created by Kent Ulberg. Once a bustling railroad line, the Grand Waterway is now the main artery for millions of people who travel to or through North Beach. 10 feet deep and 60 feet wide at its narrowest point, the waterway allows for boats up to 22 feet tall to come and go for their daily business or for a special evening out. The Grand Waterway also allows direct access to Corpus Christi Bay, both allowing for smooth and convenient sailing and taking care of a great deal of the drainage problem that has aggravated North Beach residents and visitors for decades. The Grand Waterway is over one mile in length and carries over 100 million gallons of water. The canal widens near the midpoint and lends beautiful views of passing vessels to vacationers and locals alike strolling down the waterway. Ahead, one of several architectural pedestrian bridges provides access to the beach from generous public parking on the far side. On the other side of this bridge lies the North Beach Entertainment District. Whether passing through the Entertainment District by land or by sea, you'll find more to do than you'll have time for, on this trip at least, once you moor your boat or park your car. Water taxis from downtown Corpus Christi let off in the Central Entertainment District just steps away from enough to fill any night out. If you're there at the right time of year, you might be in time for the annual Jazz Festival held in the 3,500 seat Selena Amphitheater. If you're in the right spot, the sound of screams from the roller coaster might just carry to you too. On the other side of the Amphitheater in the Pleasure Park lies the jewel of Corpus Christi, the Texas State Aquarium. This aquarium, frequently included amongst the top in the world, recently added a new $50 million Caribbean journey and is slated to break ground on a $25 million research facility in the near future. With an attraction like North Beach, it wouldn't be a surprise to see a cruise ship docked on the other side of the USS Lexington which was given to the city of Corpus Christi in 1991 and has educated millions of visitors about her history of service. The new North Beach Beachfront hosts to annual fireworks on the 4th of July, beach volleyball tournaments, and the World Windsurfing Championship has been carefully manicured with native vegetation and neatly groomed beaches. Music from the jazz festival might just echo out to the beach too. Seeing the beach filled up brings back memories of a bygone era, when airmen from the Navy base went on leave for a weekend on the beach where families came from ranches, cities, and everywhere in between to see the annual Splash Day celebration, still a famed attraction on North Beach. Walking up and over the bridge which spans the inlet to the Grand Waterway is the perfect place to see a fisherman bringing in a record catch or spot the sailboat you'll take out to Roy Island later, just a few hundred yards off the beach. On a tour of the Bird Islands under the watchful eye of the North Beach Preservation Society, soak in nature's purest habitat. Eight of the islands are designated as bird sanctuaries and do not allow humans to enter, with the exception of small tour boats which sneak a peek at the serene surroundings of South Texas wildlife, from thriving oyster beds to growing populations of birds. The far side of the islands have also been engineered to act as an effective barrier for waves from passing ships and a first line of defense against storms. The journey back is only a short one as the day draws to an end in Corpus Christi. Tomorrow might hold a new destination, but whether you're practically a regular 
or passing through for the first time, you're sure to find your home on the bay on North Beach. The happiest place in Texas.